I'm happy to be back. I don't know what day it is. Maybe it's day 12 on this job and it's way longer than I ever anticipated it would take. But we have dealt with so much crappy weather here in Northern Illinois. It's Friday morning and we haven't been on site since Monday. And even Monday, we didn't barely put any time in because of the stinking weather. We just got done experiencing probably the coldest weather I've ever been alive for, I think. Um, negative 31 actual Fahrenheit temperature, which was, uh, I think we hit a negative 60 wind chill. So, brutal cold. Nobody should be working out in that. Uh, for those of you that did, the linemen, firefighters, um, safety people, stuff like that, thank you for that service because you got more than I do. I wasn't going to go out in it and ruin any chances of, you know, I guess, uh, getting frostbite they were saying four minute frostbite anyway we are back now it's oh this better be important oh man never gonna make it hello it's kyle well yeah we finally got on site and finally got machinery started and finally gonna try and do something this week oh, machinery barely started this morning even though it's you know, like a heat wave around here. And what we're doing now, you can see guys are up in the lift and they're putting bolts in our trusses. So they're getting those two bolts top and bottom on our heel, and that is to give us that strength on like a wind load side to side. Kind of takes away having to do knee braces. And then also we're running our Tyvek, uh, what we call our Tyvek wire and attic air deflector. And that's what's gonna keep the soffits from ventilating or that's gonna help the soffits from venting up into our ridge vent. That way when we blow in that insulation in the ceiling, yes, we are blowing in the insulation in the ceiling. So I always get that question, hey, what are you doing in the ceiling? Maybe I'll be around. I don't know if I'll be around um, when they blow it in. I guess that's just time will tell. I'll try to get over here and show you guys that fiberglass getting blown in. Once we get this process done that we're working on, then we'll be able to start the ceiling. And I am super excited to get the ceiling done because I love putting a vaulted ceiling in. for you. So if you haven't already, go check out the video right here, which is our insulation video and how we like to insulate our buildings. But if you haven't and you don't feel like going over there, this is our attic air deflector. You've probably seen it in past builds, but that is ensuring that when we blow the fiberglass insulation in our ceiling, it doesn't go out into the soffits or clog up that area so that we can get our airflow out of our soffits, up over this attic air deflector, which is this guy, and up to our ridge cap. If you don't do this, you're gonna probably have problems because all of that soffit's gonna fill up with insulation, you're not gonna get your airflow, and then you're gonna have issues. 
Now, the other thing I want to talk about real quick is I know I'm gonna get this question. How do you get good insulation in that scissor truss? So out here at the heel, all the way out at the wall, we're still at 11 and a half inches. And when you come in just, I mean, not even six inches, we're about 16 and a half inches. So by putting this attic air deflector, we are, unless we pack, unless we pack this in, um, this is still nice because we've got this nice insulation barrier that's encapsulating this whole area from ceiling to wall because this is our wall cavity with this R19. So we're getting that full R value out here, even with the raised scissor cord truss. And they're just gonna basically, you know, walk these trusses. We've got um, our wind ties that go back and forth from end to end every eight foot. So they'll be able to just scurry up into the uh, attic access panel that we leave in the ceiling, and they'll come right through and blow it all in with a nice consistent 12 to 15 inches for an R38. Most of the framing wrapped up. We just got to do a little bit of miscellaneous up here on this garage door header. That's a door that's going to go all the way to the ceiling before it turns. So that's a high lift track. And then over here, we've got some window blocking that we've got to wrap up. And then that's going to be done, which is awesome because the next day we're back, we'll have all of our AC plywood. I don't know if you guys know that plywood has different grades. Well, typically we do a BC X plywood, which is a sanded grade, good plywood. But uh, for another three, I think it was like 350 or 375 a sheet. So around 40 bucks a sheet, we went with AC plywood on this one. And honestly, oh my God, that's bright. And honestly, it's, uh, it's a little bit of a you know price increase. I think there was 43 sheets um, in the job. Honestly, probably, I don't know, what's that math, 160 bucks? AC plywood, man, why not do it? It's only 160 bucks, you only get one chance, right? The other thing we got going back here is we just started our base trim, so we're gonna run that out. What we did on this one is since we're on a foundation wall, typically we're gonna make it so that the bottom of our trim is at the bottom of our doors, so our walk doors, overhead doors, but since this is on a foundation wall that has a four inch curb that's gonna come up the wall four inches, so the wall is gonna be four inches higher than the floor. Hopefully that makes sense. We went with this uh, double angle trim instead of like a base, and it's going to lap over the concrete so that you can't see it. That's the goal anyway.
All right, there we go. Not a bad day for getting back, uh, starting late, and we were able to get all the framing in the building done. We're wrapping up now, the sun is setting. Uh, I have a really hard time figuring out this lighting. It's either super bright with all the snow or it's dark. I don't know what to say, guys. I'm an amateur. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure if you haven't already, you hit that subscribe button. Next video, we should be getting some steel up on the interior. I've got the plywood getting delivered for the bottom on the walls. There's gonna be a 12 foot deep mezzanine going in the back. I think we'll probably wait until the cement is poured on the inside before we do that, which will be good because then I'll kind of come back and show you guys uh, you know what it looks like with a cement floor in it and stuff but we got the ceiling to put in we got the walls to do we got windows and doors to trim so there's still a lot to do make sure you hit that subscribe um, because this one's gonna wrap up pretty sweet and there's a lot coming down the pipeline that I'm pretty excited to share with you guys so we'll see you guys on the next one thank you for the support